Right, so hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this tutorial. So today's tutorial is on part of our AFP series and it's given by Lucy. So just a few rules. If you're watching via Zoom, if you've got any questions or comments for things that are put in the moment, if you just want to pop it into the chat and any questions that can wait to the end, if you just want to pop it into the Q&A. Um, if you're watching on the Facebook Live, just comment your questions and comments and I'll pass them on to the tutor. Um, that's all from me now and I'll hand over to Lucy. Thank you. Hi, um, so my name is Lucy Tomasetti. I am a academic F1. I'm currently at Newham Hospital working in the Barts Trust um, doing an academic AFP. And today I'm here to talk to you about the Disability Confidence Scheme, which was previously known as the Guaranteed Interview Scheme for the AFP. So this is a scheme, it's actually a government initiative that is designed to recognize the implications of long standing physical and mental health conditions. And it's meant to recognize that those things can have quite an impact on your medical studies and maybe your extracurricular achievements and white space questions and give you the opportunity to be invited to interview. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you can access the scheme, what the significance of the scheme is, um, if you're eligible for it and why I think it's such a great thing. So a little disclaimer before we begin. I am not affiliated with becoming a doctor. Everything I talk about here will be things that I found online. It will be about my own experiences. Um, and so just so you know that. Um, and I'll also say here, this is quite a short talk. It's probably about 20 minutes long. I am going to be focusing on the DCS, but I will also give you some of my tips and some of my feelings and opinions on the AFP application. It might be a little bit London centric because I only applied to London. Um, but if you have any questions in general about the AFP as well, I'm also happy to answer those. So the purpose of this talk is really just to understand what the purpose of the DCS, the Disability Confidence Scheme, is. It's to understand who is eligible for it and if you may be eligible for it, because the definition is actually quite broad and so it's suitable for a lot of people. It's also to understand how you can best evidence and support access to the DCS because that is extremely vague on the UK FPO website and finally it's to understand what role the DCS has in the AFP application because a lot of people seem a little bit confused about that as well. So the purpose of the disability confidence scheme. As I said it's a government initiative and actually you will find lots of employers do take part in the DCS scheme. I think there's three different tiers. Um, but what it aims to do is change attitudes to disability, increase understanding of disability, remove barriers um, that people with long term conditions and disability have, and also provide opportunities for people to fulfill their potential and reach their aspirations. So it's all about recognizing the impact that disability and long term conditions can have and trying to offer people um, alternative routes and assistance in securing these positions. So if we talk about that in the context of the academic foundation program, if you are able to, and you're eligible for the DCS, you can apply for it and you can use that to guarantee yourself an interview at um, any deanery that you apply to for the AFP. And as far as I'm aware, if you apply to two deaneries, it guarantees you an interview at both of them. So it means that you don't have to meet the shortlist or long list requirements at that stage you will definitely get an interview that being said everything that they ask for so they ask for information about your decile they ask for information about your um, extracurricular achievements so your prizes your posters um, presentations all of that publications they still will ask for that and if applicable they will still ask for your white space questions once again i only apply for the AFP in london so i haven't done any white space questions at any point those things will still be taken into consideration in your application. Uh, the DCS guarantees you an interview. It does not guarantee you a job, but it provides you with the opportunity to interview. Um, and it's basically just recognizing if you've had a long-term condition during medical school, if you've had a disability during medical school, you may not have ticked every single box. You may have ticked every single box, but it may be more difficult for you to tick every single box that they're looking for in the AFP application. And it gives you the opportunity to come to interview and really show what you're capable of and what you can do. 
It also is designed to provide specific arrangements and adjustments at each stage of the application. So for example, I have friends with dyslexia who have applied for the DCS and they have been given additional support with the white space questions and they've been given additional time. And I think they use screens as opposed to paper to make it um, easier to read, uh, but additional time with the scenarios that are presented to you in the AFP interview. So it does both of those things. Now, the next thing is who is eligible for the DCS? This is very vague. I personally didn't know if I was eligible, but I think it is vague purposefully so that as many people as possible can access it. So you have to have the minimum criteria for the post, which as you would expect is you either currently have a medical degree or you're expected to be awarded a medical degree in the academic year with no fitness to practice, return, fitness to practice concerns and an acceptable SJT result. Obviously you won't have done the SJT yet, you won't have the score back. Um, it's very, very rare for someone's job offer to be withdrawn on the basis of an SJT score. That's only gonna happen if it's exceptionally low. And that would only happen after conversation between yourself, uh, your medical school and the UK FPO. Um, so the other thing that you have to have to apply for the DCS is you have to meet that specific criteria. So you need um, to have a disability as per the Disability Discrimination Act of 1995. So that would include any kind of physical or mental impairment that causes substantial, adverse, long-term impact on your ability to carry out day-to-day -day activities. They don't really elaborate much on what any of those terms mean. So substantial, they say, is more than minor or trivial. So I, I have never spoken to someone from the UK FPO about how exactly this works, but it was put to me that something like, if you have asthma, for example, and you simply take an inhaler every day and you don't really exhibit any symptoms, that would be considered minor. If you're someone with asthma who has regular exacerbations, you've been hospitalized um, for your asthma, it prevents you going to class on some days, then that would be considered more substantial. And it also needs to be something that is long term, that is ongoing for more than 12 months. I know some people um, in the past, we had a discussion about this at medical school. Some people said, well, I've got a condition which is now a long term condition, but I've only been suffering with it for nine months. But I expect it to have quite a profound impact on me as I move forward. And the advice has always been contact the UK FPO and see if you are eligible for the scheme. The worst thing that you can do is you can apply, you can submit evidence and they can tell you it's not valid and that you will only be considered for the AFP as a normal applicant. Um, but the best thing that can happen is they could say you're eligible for the scheme and you can utilize it. It's always best to ask and to try um, than not to ask. So yeah, it's, it's purposefully vague, but this would include any physical or mental health problems. Um, it's very broad. So in terms of how you have to evidence the DCS. So when you apply for the DCS, as far as I'm aware, as far as it was done last year, it was literally a checkbox on my AFP application form, uh, which just said, do you consider yourself to have a disability? And if yes, would you like to be considered for what at the time was called the guaranteed interview scheme? I'm really sorry, I did try and go on Oriel and see if, that exists and if I could include a screenshot but I can't access the AFP application form anymore so sorry about that but that's where it's located um, and then they will not ask you for evidence of um, your illness at the time I believe they emailed me at the beginning of November end of October and said can you provide evidence for this it doesn't specify what they accept on the UK FPO website. I do believe when they email you, they give you a little bit more guidance. But for me, I knew that I had to submit some form of written evidence. I literally just submitted um, a page of notes from my GP, um, which they just printed out for me. And I actually called the GP and said, I need a printout of this. And this is why I said, I'm, I'm applying for F1. I'm applying for this scheme that requires me to show that I've had a long-term condition. And it literally just said, I had condition X. I'd had it for a while length of time. Here were my symptoms. Here was the impact it was having on me from an educational standpoint. Very, very brief, like five to 10 lines. You can also use things like, you can get your GP to write an actual letter or you can, probably use clinic letters and they will tell you whether it's suitable or not and they usually give you a bit of time so if it's not suitable you can get a suitable form of evidence. So 
what is the role of the disability confidence scheme in the AFP process? So, as I was saying before, the DCS guarantees you an interview, it does not guarantee you a job. You are still competing against everyone else in the same way that you would be otherwise. It just means you get that interview. So the role of your decile score, the role of your educational achievements, the role of your white space questions and the role of your overall interview are still going to be very relevant. And they state on the website that you should not be scored any differently um, because you are part of the DCS scheme. So for the most part, if you have a medical condition or a long-term condition that isn't visible, the people examining you in the interview will not know that you are utilizing the scheme. Obviously, if you have a condition and you need to have special arrangements in the room, they may become aware that the scheme is being used. But for everything else, it's all standardized, so there's no room for kind of um, differences in score. It's standardized, so you're compared against everyone equally. And I know different foundation scores compute things in different ways, and I also know that they purposefully do not include information about how every single score is utilized. I saw a document last year which showed how London utilized um, some of these scores that was produced by the foundation school. And I think the decile wasn't multiplied, but the educational achievements and the interview scores were multiplied by four. So it basically meant that those things were more valid than your decile score, for example, but they're all still relevant. The thing I say about this is because the DCS does such an excellent job at getting you in the front door and getting you the opportunity to do an interview and really show what you're passionate about and why you'd be great at the AFP. And so if one of your education scores or your death score or your white space questions aren't that great, you can kind of compensate for it at the interview. Um, so yeah, as I said, it's all about just getting you in and getting you for the interview. Um, the AFP is super, super competitive. I think that's something that we're all aware of. Um, so it is going to, if you have a lower death score, if you have a lower educational achievement score, it's still very much an uphill battle. But at the end of the day, the AFP is a great program to be part of. But even if you don't get into the program, you've had the experience of interviewing, which is so useful. A lot of people will not have had a proper job interview since the beginning of medical school. And if you're planning on going to specialty training, that is going to be part of that process. So it's just good to have as much exposure as possible. Um, and why not? You never know. You might get it. You've got to put your best foot forward and you've got to take advantage of anything that you can get to get the job you want. And um, the DCS is one way of doing that. So I'm sorry, that was very, very short because there's not actually a huge amount of stuff about the disability confidence scheme on the website and there's not loads of ins and outs of it. But I thought I'd also give you guys a few general tips on AFP applications. I'm sure you've been getting these from a lot of different people, but these are the things that I wish I'd known prior to starting my AFP journey. Um, so the first one is utilize the DCS if eligible. I really just think it's, there it's specifically designed for you if you've had a long-term condition or you've got a disability the reality is your journey through medical school has probably been more difficult than some other people's journeys and so you should utilize this um, and you shouldn't be held back from opportunities just because okay maybe you haven't been able to spend as much time in the classroom as you'd like or maybe you haven't been able to give as much time to extracurriculars as you like because of your health um, so use it if you're able to use it the second thing is focusing on yourself, not others. I think the AFP in particular is really, really competitive. Um, and coming from London, I knew people who were specifically competing with me from the same jobs or for the same jobs. So you really need to recognize that investing time in comparing yourself to others is not investing time in making your application better. And that's really the only thing you can do to secure your place. So really, Focus on yourself. If you're writing white space questions, make them as um, eloquent and informative as possible. Um, if you're just listing your achievements, most of that has been done by now. But in terms of the interview, just don't let other people freak you out. I think it can be useful to practice with other people. Um, it was definitely useful for me because my friends would pull different kinds of example papers off of the internet. So we use quite a broad range of resources and I felt like I was prepared for anything that was coming my way. 
and it's nice it can be a social experience to practice with other people um but don't let their comments kind of get to you take everything as constructive criticism and don't be like well this person is in this desk and this person's done this and this person's done that and that means they're going to get the job over me just go and put your best foot forward in every situation you have to think why should they not give me the job like i am going to walk in here and i'm going to get this job you have to have that kind of attitude if you want really anything in life so that's my opinion on that um the next thing is check which of your educational achievements are valid uh, a lot of people I know didn't list educational achievements that could have given them points that would have been really, really helpful. So even if you're in doubt, you can always contact the UKFPO or you can just list your achievements and um, that will that will let you know um, if it's valid. I think lots of things like getting merits and distinctions in some places are valid and lots of different prizes are valid. Also, I know that I think it's only for, you only get points for presenting at national and international conferences, but I would just list everything. If you're unsure about anything, ask specifically and look very, very closely at the AFP um, guidance because they will specifically state if um, your um, prize or opportunity extracurricular activity meets the criteria. Um, in terms of white space questions, I think you guys have already had an in-depth talk about them, but using lots of active language is always a good idea. Make it seem like you've sought out opportunities that you've been really engaged in getting those opportunities. Um, and use lots of examples of things that you've already done. People need you to be very self-motivated and independent for the AFP. Um, some projects organized beforehand in London in particular are given a lot of freedom and there's a lot of expectation on you that you'll be able to organize your own projects and what you wanna do. And so if you can show that beforehand, that's really positive. And the final thing is do not use the internet to try and determine what the interviews will be like. I got sent a PDF I think a couple of weeks before the interviews by the deanery, which said, you're going to have a clinical scenario, um, which may contain ethical components, and you're going to have a research um, interview, which will be about analyzing a paper and then talking about some of the things that you've already done. That research interview was super self-explanatory. I think honestly, the most technical question in it was, what is the key value? There's not going to be anything in it that's beyond a basic, I, I would hesitate to even say A-level statistics. I think most of it will be below A-level statistics. Um, so just kind of know that. And in terms of the clinical scenario, really just know how to do a good A to E assessment and know, you know, if you're saying, okay, A, the airway is patent, B, I'm going to check the breathing, oh, the person's oxygen saturation is at 87%, I'm going to start some oxygen, then you need to go back to A and start the whole process again. Um, so just know to do that and know that there will probably be some kind of ethical component in it. No basic things like, okay, um, even if someone else has made a mistake, you can apologize on their behalf and that's not an admission of your own guilt. And no to say things like the, you can refer people to pals, you can date people if necessary. Those kind of things always come up in those scenarios. Um, know when to escalate to the reg, when to escalate to the consultant, all that kind of stuff. If you know it, it makes it look like you're competent and you know what you're doing. And um, that will give you extra points. It's like a tick box exercise in many ways. Uh, I looked online the day before my London interview and someone said that they had been asked about like, congenital liver diseases or something. And I just got myself in such a state for five minutes. And I was like, you know what? I can't learn everything about every area of medicine before this interview tomorrow. So if they start asking me random pathophysiology questions, I'm just not gonna be able to answer them. And I'm just gonna go and be like, at least I've had this interview experience. And uh, that didn't happen. That's just people trying to freak other people out on the internet because this is a very competitive job. So yeah, just, open-minded, go in, put your best foot forward, try and be as logical and as reasoned as you can and you'll be fine. So in terms of takeaways, the DCS is a really important scheme. It wants to recognize the fact that those living with disability and long-term conditions are gonna have probably a more challenging time during medical school and it will have an effect on their educational outcomes. So they guarantee you an interview. So if you meet the disability criteria for over 12 months then you're eligible for the DCS, 
you need written evidence of this and the UKFPO will specifically write to you to provide that. Um, it guarantees you an interview and also specific arrangements and adjustments as necessary. Uh, other things, the AFP is really not the be all and end all. I really feel like people get very, very, very fixated on the AFP as a concept. I think it's become like kind of a prestigious thing, but at the end of the day, even if you don't get an AFP, there's still so many opportunities to get involved in research as an F1 and an F2. People are constantly asking me to do things at the moment. So don't think that just because you don't get an AFP, you're not gonna have opportunities for research. And there are other ways if you want to do further research in the future, if you want to do an ACF or anything like that, there are other ways of demonstrating your interest in academia without doing AFP. Um, and there's lots of other great programs out there. Um, and finally, I just wanted to kind of say that like, this is your achievement. If you were to get an AFP and you were to do it using the DCS, that's still a huge achievement. It doesn't take anything away from that because you use the DCS. Um, I've had people talk about this before and saying, well, like, do you think you would have got the interview otherwise? Do you think blah, blah, blah? And at the end of the day, a team of people who assess who should do the AFP every year and who assess that you meet the criteria have come to the conclusion that you meet the criteria. Yes, you may have had more of a struggle to get onto the long list or the short list because you might not tick every single box, but at the end of the day, your uh, decile, your educational achievements, white space questions, interview are all still included in your application. It doesn't make any difference to that. So yeah, it might just help you get through the first stage, but everything else you've done is all you. And that is someone making an assessment that you are the right person for the job. And they're far more experienced than anyone else to do that. So still, it's a huge achievement to get an AFP. Uh, I'm informed by other people. I don't want to be like, because I'm doing an AFP. I doesn't it's just it's just a job but it's a really great job and I think the AFP is brilliant so yeah I'm happy to answer absolutely anything that anyone wants to know about anything at all uh, anything I can tell you about the AFP um, yeah uh, and that's pretty much it or anything about the DCS and yeah there is feedback as well there's some links all of this will be available online Anything anyone wants to know? Your EPM, your decile score does still count in terms of numbers. They will still count it. In London, I think it's counted like it was previously. I don't know if this is still the case and I'm sure that they do change this on a year to year basis. I believe at one point in London, they would not multiply your decile, but they would multiply your interview score and your um, educational achievement score and then add all of those together. So the decile was still involved. It was just less important than those other two scores. Um, but different foundation schools do it in different ways. The fact, the thing is with using this scheme, everything that counts for everyone else still counts for you. It's just, you get the interview. That's the only thing that it offers. Um, so if you are to be below kind of like the shortlist score, um, in terms of EPM or educational achievements, you're still going to have to give a really, really good interview to get the job up over someone who was already meeting all those criteria, if that makes sense. But if you were, you know, in a situation where you score one point higher than someone in the interview score and you've got exactly the same um, educational achievement score, but they're four points higher than you in the, um, or three points higher than you in the deciles, you would actually end up with the same score if you score one point higher in the interview. They do like, right, I feel like this is one of those things that's really weird to explain. But different places make it count different amounts. And that was just a document I read from London. I don't know if that's still relevant. I'm not affiliated with the foundation school, so I, I don't know. Anything else anyone wants to know? Any questions about the interview or anything else? What it's like to be in a one um anything like that
Is there a cutoff for deciles for each? Uh, AUOA? I don't know how you say that. Uh, yes, I think a lot of them do have a cutoff for deciles. Um, I think from what I understand, in some places, it's like the long list is you have to be above a certain decile. And then the short list is what takes into account your educational achievements and your white space questions. Once again, varies from school to school, year to year. Um, but the idea of the DCS is even if you were below that cutoff, you would still get an interview and you would still be eligible for a job. So say, for example, say you came uh the, the cutoff was the fourth decile and you came in the fifth decile but you were applying with the DCS you would still get an interview and you'd be considered for the job but your the fact that your decile is lower is something they would still know but it would be where it would also then take into account interview score and educational achievements it's like getting over that first hurdle of the cutoff score and then you have to kind of show that you have the, the skills needed Anything else? Anything at all? <laughs> I'm happy to answer whatever you want. Um, so, uh, if there's no further questions, um, I will go, uh, if you have any further questions, I'm sure that people, um, hopefully, uh, people can get in contact with me through becoming a doctor. I don't know exactly how that works, um, but I'm happy to answer anything at a later stage. Um, and all of the slides will be made available for your use. But yeah. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for your time. I hope it's been useful and relatively informative. I know it's kind of niche. But yeah, that's about it.